Morning, a lovely morning to you out there this lovely Friday, where we'll be still anchoring on Good Morning Anambra on a discussion segment. My name is Ajun Chuku Okawe. Everyone, everywhere hearing my voice, watching me, you definitely understand that the essence of life is good health. And who gives good health? Philanthropists, doctors, people that have the enablement to know that every Nigerian, every child needs what it takes in order to have what that essentials that health provides. And in the studio this morning, we shall be talking about that, talking about what someone is doing in his own capacity to bring um, medical attention, medical aid, medical mission to those less privileged. And this is tagged free. Free, when I mean free, I mean free of charge. You're not paying anything. The only thing that you need to do is make yourself available. And that is very, very loudly. Uh, well, I can say that the people championing this thing, the people pioneering this thing, are already reaping two benefits. Their reward is one year on earth, and then another one is waiting for them in the great beyond. I'm not talking other than the, the person, Michael, I mean Marcel of Formata, who happens to be the, uh, the founder, Marcel of Formata Foundation, and chairman, American Group. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here this lovely morning. And also we have Dr. Alphonsus Ekanem, Chief Medical Director of Marcel of Formata Foundation. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much. That's why we are Nigerians, because we happen to speak different dialects. Quickly, uh, Master of Formata Foundation, this is the 16th edition of your free medical outreach. How come I've not even been a particular of this? Where have I been in these 15 years, all this while? <laughs> <laughs> but well, being the 16th venture, probably I'll be getting my own free medical uh, outreach from you. Please, I want to know what gave birth to this? What necessitated um, this? Um, thank you so much. Over the years, you know, like you, 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 well, you said something that is very important, which is the importance of health. Yeah. Is a wealth. Yeah. When you're healthy, you're worthy. So over the years, you know, if you have, if you're well to do, or if God blesses you, people come around you every time, you know. Yeah. And they come around with challenges, you know. And you need to figure out exactly how do you deal with them to be able to remain sane and do other things, you know. So uh, I was privileged to have friends from all, all over the world, especially in the U.S. Uh, we have this Emma Bridge Foundation. Yeah. They came to Nigeria, and they had this mission. I saw it going on in Aquabu. It was amazing. I work with them, talk with them, and chat with them. They decided to also help us. So they came around they, 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 they Chicago, from Chicago, the white guys, a couple of times, you know. And this doctor has always been there. He's been the champion, he's been champion of the world. So I, I brought in brought in Tanambra. <laughs> I brought in Tanambra. I have my way of I brought in Tanambra, and we had an amazing time. Thank and you. And they love it, and they come again, and they come again. And they, now they stop coming here, we see you do it. And, getting better and better. Well, uh, let me come to you, Dr. Alfonso Zekane. I would have been a doctor, but for the fear of blood. And <laughs> but I'm compassionate about seeing people smile and people be happy and be healthy and, and the rest of it all. Now, being, um, let's say, a philanthropist and then seeing people, because your profession is all about getting people better than they yeah. came to you. You understand? So now, going on the area of well, let's say this philanthropic gesture, how has it been to you? Merging it with your career and then this other one that you're doing. Oh, thank you so very much. And of course, I don't think any man will be complete without you giving back to the society. The essence of being a professional, medical doctor, nurses, laboratory scientists, pharmacist, it's not just to make ends for yourself, yeah. but to give back to society. As for me, Whenever I give back to the society, whenever I put smiles on the faces of the people, that gives me joy. So over time, I've been involved in this philanthropy, especially uh, like uh, the chairman of uh, Amicom Group, as earlier stated. I've been medical director for Ima Bridge, America, Africa, that I've been providing free medical and surgical uh, free surgeries for the people of Nigeria, especially in Akwaibom State. And with their partnership with the uh, Marcel of Formata Foundation, had been in Anambra State for many years until the foundation decided to take it, uh, take the whole by, by, bull by the horn. Yeah. And I mean, taking ownership, full ownership of 
the 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 process sponsoring it from the beginning to the end so i it gives me a great pleasure and joy giving back to the people especially the people in anambra state where i have a, a great tie with them <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> as an in-law here as a grandchild of Igbo land yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it gives me honor. joy and happiness and uh, have a double honor <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's good that's good so now um the outreach the free medical outreach which area of medicine are you or ailment are you looking into cover oh uh, actually, we have uh, we do this twice a year. Yeah. We have the January edition, and we also have the August edition. The this is the 16th edition of the Master of Formata Foundation. Okay. That is the 16 times we have carried out these free medical, medical outreach. outreaches in these states. We've gone through various communities, including this Agulu, somewhere here. So we, we've been doing this. Now the January edition is usually encompasses uh, including medication, medical treatment, free surgeries, eyes, and all of that. But the August edition, no, we drew our, we, we, we decided to take this because we know that in January, so many persons would have visited home. We know that so many people would have eaten a lot in December, yeah, yeah. and then their disease condition would have uh, been exacerbated, like people living with uh, diabetes, uh, hypertension, yeah that are diet influenced. So also in August edition, during the New Year festival, where we know that a lot of people are there at home and people are also coming, people are coming to visit parents, old people, aged, the difficult to reach, even the less privileged. So we are not selective, so we provide healthcare, free healthcare services to everyone. So we cover a wide range of disease conditions, including diabetes, hypertension, malaria, typhoid, what we call typhoid in quotes, and a urinary tract infection, upper respiratory tract infection. We uh, also, even children, children, we have pneumonia and other health conditions. We make diagnosis, we consult uh, people clinically, we diagnose prostate diseases, pro prostate, yes, enlargements with their clinical signs and symptoms. And then also for pregnant women, we also give them counseling, even those that are facing facility challenges. We also, we counsel them. There are others living with the HIV AIDS and those that do not even know after counseling, we counsel, we just discover some of them for the first time and then they, they will be given appropriate counseling and make appropriate referral to where they can actually get care yeah. in the healthcare facilities. And then in the January edition, we also include free surgeries. We do surgeries of all kinds, uh, ranging from herniorraphies, that is hernia surgery, hydrocelectomy. We do myomectomy, that is fibroid surgery, free of charge. Wow. And then we do hysterectomy for those that warrant hysterectomy, that is removal of womb. For the aged ones with indication, we do it for them free of charge. We do appendectomy, exploratory laparotomy, or lumpectomy, um, no fibroid adenoma. All, all kinds of surgeries, we carry them out in January edition. And these are surgeries that usually one would need to spend more than a million to perform one surgery. One, one surgery. But we do all of this free of charge, courtesy of the Master of Formata Foundation. And then we also do provide free eye checks, free reading glasses, um, I mean, free eye ophthalmic medications, that is drugs we use to treat various eye ailments are also provided free of charge, both in January and in August in edition. August. So we are always equipped with the uh, professionals, um, surgeons, general surgeons, obstetrics and gynecologists like myself, and we have physicians, cardiologists, pediatric doctors, that is doctors taking care of children. Mm -hmm. and community health doc, uh, workers, nurses, pharmacies. So you, you guys are coming with that is the entire crew. Package. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly, the full package, yes, the entire package. Yes, the full package, yes. Now, coming to talk, uh, uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Marcel, how, as in, sometimes you begin to wonder when people go into philanthropy, there is really a reason, a motive to you. Nobody just wakes up and just says, this is what I want to do. Even when you know that, oh, okay, God has blessed me, I want to. Then there must be an underlining factor, something that triggered this and say, wow, 
I want to do this and let me, you know, touch people's lives. Please, for those that are watching, for those that yeah. probably have the inkling to mm -hmm. let them see, maybe they can tap from whatever uh, thing you have uh, to say. Thank you so much. I think there's something that has actually uh, enjoyed me to continuously do this. Is the, the fact that I've been able to understand my life purpose clearly. Okay. I have a clarity when it comes to my life purpose. You know? Okay. And so with that, you know, you know what you be face for. You know what you have to do, and you, do, you don't miss what you don't. You're not. Everything you do is intentional. You know, I, I was in Vietnam to study my life purpose for a week. So when I get out of that room, I knew I have something to do, and I have just have to keep doing it. That's <laughs> it's amazing. Because that, it must be something beyond, you know, you. It must be something bigger, bigger than you. So life, but life is something key. But we, sometimes we're not able to get uh, the right, uh, you know, what is uh, actually our life purpose. But if you have your right purpose, your, your life purpose, and you have clarity on it, you, you're intentional about what you do. You don't just go anywhere. You, you, you do what you know. You, this is your calling. And when you're doing it, you're happy about you're it. You're happy about it. You're contented. And then whatever it is you have, you, do, you just keep doing it. You don't fail. Except you don't have anything to eat again. That's why you stop. <laughs> uh, of course, that's so true about it. You know. It's not about making anybody happy. Sometimes people think, oh, it won't get attention. Excuse me. I start, I don't need attention anymore. I'm done with attention. I'm, I'm in my, you know, I'm in uh, statement now. So I don't look for any attention again. Of course. Uh -huh, so, and God has been kind to us too. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Dr. Marcel, uh, for you to carry out such um, a magnitude of, you know, medical outreach and then trying to cure so many things, how much publicity was this given so that the people that actually need it will make themselves available? Yeah, thank you. Uh, publicity is sort of, it's expensive, very expensive. Coming down here, you know, it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to do it. What we do is we, we every every town that we have this mission, we uh, enable the town criers, we use the churches, um, um, and then that does. So all the churches have this announcement in the community. Okay. And then the town crier goes around to talk about it. Okay. Now we don't, we don't get uh, sometimes we still get numbers you know, because sometimes people sometimes people are not as skeptical for whatever reason, but. You know, it was according to the free come out. I think people have even come to know now because it has become regular. regular yes. yes, it's now like a routine, twice yearly. So people are quite aware. So without necessarily waiting for publicity, although publicity are always done, people yeah. are always aware that yeah, at this particular yeah, we, time, when you get this, yeah, so. especially when we may come together. Yeah. Together, yeah, August yes, meeting, yeah. August meeting. And there's something else about this medical uh, mission. I think 2015, oh, I was in the US, and I encountered, there was a program we had, I think one of the um, UN program, and then I had Nigerians who have tried medical mission, and they actually have so much uh, bad experience, and they, they, they will not encourage it. Why? Because they come once in three years or five years. So, and that's very dangerous. But the consistency we've had over the years has made our client yeah. stable. Imagine stable. You know, your doctor is coming twice a year at least. So you're sure you're going to have your doctor twice a year. Twice a year. That's something beautiful. That's something, you know, that's something that, you know, everybody who has uh, of course. Uh, ability to be able to make it, should be able to make it because the consistency gives Matters you the rest of yeah. mind. Yes, yeah. and you have your record, you know, so. And again, you know, before now, at some times where you have this free medical outreach, like some politicians who yeah, just want to stage yeah, ones yeah, at a time, yeah. maybe during election period, uh -huh. to catch people's attention. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. they will just carry out free medical outreach, and after thereafter, That's That's the four or five years, or none again. <laughs> and then the beneficiaries may not have the opportunity of going back. You know, the health-seeking attitude, behavior of our people, uh, coupled with the present economic it realities, reality, um, yeah. not want to seek health care. So, Maybe after the first diagnosis, the one may just be having a diagnosed diabetic for the first time. Follow up may be a challenge. But what the, with what the Master of Formata Foundation is doing, there is consistency. Where by the time you, you know, identify someone with this particular health challenge, challenge. you counsel, treat, make referral. Even though the person may not even want to go to uh, hospital, but in the next six months, we return. And we will still have to uh, another contact with the person. It is easier to follow up and to continue the quality of care that you provided earlier, and counselling and referral, and continue to encourage the patient and, and as well treatments. 
So I, I think this uh, biennial, this twice yearly yeah, yeah. activity program is very beneficial to the people. And over time, people have been expressing their satisfaction and happiness. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, if you happen to stay in Nigeria, because I know you guys are American bound and uh, uh, American based, but there's this, um, there's this, there's this uh, impending flooding that usually occurs, you know, from time to time. Like the natural National Meteorological um, Agency announced that 32 out of 37 states in Nigeria will be will experience flood. And Anambra happens to be one of such. Some parts of Nigeria have already been experiencing that flood now. That's the need for IDP camps and stuff like that. And you know, when people you know, are Cluster, congested, yeah. clustered at a particular place, um, health, the sanitation of that place is yeah. nothing to write home about. Wow. Diseases are easy to counter because of the crowded nature yeah. and everything like that. In your Michael of, I mean, Master of Formata Foundation, are you people factoring in trying to eliminate the stress of the health challenges Nigerians, you understand, will be suffering when things like this do occur. Because very soon we'll be having IDP camps or you will I say maybe yeah, IDP yes. camps when the flood comes. Yeah. This is um, uh, quite interesting and it's something is a challenge that we are Nigerians should be prepared to face like you've talked about where you have ID camps like that because of poor sanitation, Sanitation personal hygiene. People may develop a wide range of conditions like cholera and the rest of it, even scabies. Uh, The foundation actually is also being prepared for that. But although, you know, this is a program that is personally sponsored by a philanthropist, by one who loves his people, not one, yes. And then, uh, it, then without any assistance from the government of, or any agency. So uh, financial challenge may be a, a situation and from time to time, especially when you, when you have a situation like you have people in ID camps, IDP camps, where people may be many, and you may need to procure some medications to tackle the condition, and especially with the present prices of things in the system so uh, the foundation will always be ready if the foundation has a sponsor <laughs> to support the system yes yeah, it will always be ready yeah um, I, I must uh, I must say that sometime you know, had the COVID yeah you know that was uh, when I never knew that we are so significant you know what what would really matters and people actually recognize what we did during the COVID at the heat of the COVID I provided what we call the hygiene box yeah. hygiene box had everything you needed for to fight COVID. To yes. fight COVID. And to be able to attend to the public and come out of yourself clean. Who we'll gave to the police in thousands, police, immigration, custom, um, civil defense. Civil defense, you know. Even the civil society. Civil, civil yeah. society, journalists, you know, all the people who are actually on the front run were able to provide their hygiene but in thousands. And I marvel how I was able to do that. But I think I was driven by, you know, seeing our men on the front line to do yourself. And if there's anything I did at that point, is that be able to come out clean you know, after taking to the public? And we did that. It was well recommended by, even by the presidency that this is what it should be. You know, and I was I felt good about that. We were not prepared for that, but when it came knocking, we we struggled to see what can we do. Because I've had some issue, um, had some relationship with the nation on water sanitation, so I was able to I have some equipment already in my warehouse, so an empty warehouse, just a short of food just supplies. And that was actually recommendable. So, when the flood comes, like it comes, uh, we'll do what we can, you know, always we'll do what we can. We are passionate about it, because that's our, for me, that's our life. <laughs> we want to be able to see how we can help. Yeah. We always decided to help, because uh, the help we're given, it doesn't come from us, it comes from God. So when God gives us health and gives us his, I mean, it's joy expressing it with other brothers and sisters. Sincerely speaking, you've said a whole lot, and I'm beginning to wonder uh, if an individual can have this, um, will I say, milk of joy, happiness in you, and you're willing to share yeah. to others, then what happens to constituted authority that is their responsibility yeah. to do these things that they are doing? <laughs> now, you begin to ask, my question now is, is there any way you feel that there is need to do more than you can do? Then you begin to seek international support or government support, however it can be so that you can do more. Because I know that f- from what you've been doing, this is the 16th yeah. 
um, um, events that you'll be doing, there are times you might have seen challenges and you say, oh, if only there was support mm -hmm. from elsewhere, I could have done more. Is there any time soon you're thinking about, <laughs> you understand, <laughs> looking for um, support in order to do this? Because sincerely speaking, the more you do, the more you need to do. And then there is a limit to what you can actually do. So any time you're looking for government or maybe international support to help you take it up from there? Yes, of course. Um, so, um, like what we've been doing, most of the time we are, although not actually quite limited to three communities, Isofia, Iboko, we've been very consistent with those communities and uh, Nanka, though we've been to Agulu before, but uh, the foundation had had a vision to reach out to the entirety of Anambra State and even beyond, but not for financial challenges. So if, we, if the financial uh, challenges gap are closed, we'll be able to extend our um, charity you, you, you beyond yeah. those uh, communities. In fact, there was a time that the, uh, the foundation assumed that, oh, we should be carrying this out like maybe take a whole month or two, taking from one local government to the other, because even though we've been providing this regularly, some persons still have difficulty um, take, going through transportation, you know, with the high cost of transportation to where uh, these services are being provided. So but with appropriate funding, finances, with vehicles and all of that, what we could even use, maybe sometime we could place a vehicle somewhere that could convey people at the central point to another point, especially the surgical patient, the surgical patient during the surgical uh, mission. Yeah. Uh, so these are the gaps that need to be bridged. So if we, and again, the facility we use to carry out surgeries does not have enough space to accommodate, accommodate yeah. persons uh, who are having major surgical operations done that will be placed on admission before discharge, for observation before discharge. So these are some of those things that assistance may be, it may be needed to expand the facility so that it could provide a larger room for persons, the beneficiaries, to be accommodated. Thank you so much. And now, this um, medical outreach um, you do is being carried out in medical facilities? Yes. Yes, uh, with yeah. the basic amenity, yes. what's running water, yes. electricity, yes. and the rest of it, yes. and then the trained uh, personnel. Like, like the one in my hometown, the one in Sofia, yes. it was actually um, a facility I built with my, my friends when I was the chairman of the IHRA. It was a two-story building. That was during the time. When we built that, when we, when we built that uh, facility, I had nothing in mind like medical mission. But uh, coincidentally, it just it came. It just came. And that's the first thing we've been using. And I sort of imagine well, how would we have managed if we've never had that vision to have the facility built for my community at the time we did that. You know, when you look at them, you just understand that these are God's divine, you know, uh, plan for us. Because, I mean, how do we wake up with the facility? Two story facility. Young people in our 30s, you know. Yeah, just, just, just coming out of uh, you know age grade, so we did that. How we did that? We just went back. We give it to government, and then over time again, the time comes on. Then we also opportunity. If we never had that facility, maybe the three would have been different. It would have been different <laughs> because <laughs> you begin to need to source, apply to yes, the government yes, to use their facilities, yes, facilities in order to carry out yes. things like this. Yes. But even 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 at that. Are there challenges you, you, you encounter in trying to do this that you guys are doing as in the outreach and then bringing smiles to the faces of Ndianambra and to the other communities that you've been having, um, going to challenges may, whereby maybe bottleneck bureaucracy, no. the igways, the no. stuff and stuff like that? No, no so far no. So we actually person. commend the, the igways, the leadership of uh, these communities because we haven't faced any challenge. Rather, we, they have extended their hands of fellowship, welcoming us you know, yeah. during this period of New Year Festival when we come like this. Hopefully, oh. Onugu <laughs> 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 will be given to us with the uh, you know, Pound of Yam <laughs> and all of that. Yeah. And uh, one important thing that we give, uh, we give thanks to God is that over time, for all the 16 missions we have carried out, there hasn't been any mortality, no morbidity. In fact, all that we have received are testimonies. 
testimonies. Yeah. So we give God the glory. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's yeah. what the medical yeah. people would yeah. definitely tell you that they yeah. take God takes the glory, but they are yeah. the workmen that yes, you understand yes. that yes. do the old job. Mm -hmm. And it is highly commendable to actually see that uh, Nigerians are actually out there looking for ways to, you know, enumerate, reduce the burden of what your daily income will take by bringing a sucker to those that actually need it. Because, sincerely speaking, if there is a reason why this place is called Nigeria. There's a reason why we have so many ethnic uh, diversity. There's a reason why we are different, you understand? And there's a reason why philanthropists like Ofoma, um, Ofoma Tal Master, will be in our midst in order to bring the needed help to communities. And then to Alphonsus uh, himself, Dr. Alphonsus, there is a reason why you probably are a medical doctor in doing this thing <laughs> so that people can definitely smile. You know, when we, when we, in this part of the world, as Africans, we know gratitude. We know how to reward gratitude when it comes up to us. Like people will say, uh, live your life so that your name will be etched in the sands of time. time yes. And from what you guys are doing, and many more people, you understand, your names will definitely be etched in the sands of time, in the lives and the impacts of those that you have actually taught. Now, from America that you are, friends that are seeing these glorious things that you're doing, wanting to you know, partner with you, or probably wanting to tell them to go to their own respective communities and do these things. How much have you tried to do that no, so that I people I'm can? Here. I'm here. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm America. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you still have yeah, links. Yeah, he travels, there. Yeah, 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 exactly. You still travel and yeah. do. I try to encourage him. Yeah. Like I told you, the, the, um, one of the uh, sharp observations I had from one of them, and they were, they were just not uh, right about it. They had, all, they had it all put up together wrongly because they felt the mission is just once in a while, long while, you know. So they say you know, that, that's what it was. But they, they didn't know that we have this consistency. If they didn't know we have this consistency, they were actually, you know, flawed. We, see, we hope to get friends and then we hope to see how more people come in to help us because it's actually a big burden. It's a big burden. But when I look at the burden also, I, I still I look up to God and God say, go ahead, just keep going. Because it's burdensome, actually. I know. It's so much money. Because, I mean, these are medical personnel also. You need to, you, they need to house them. You need to accommodate them in the hotel. You need to be there for days. We need to be eating what we're eating and what we're doing. So it's a lot and it's only on me. But I believe God that over time, we hope to be able to get through this. I think it's a face, you know, it's a face. Because we have staff now who try to work with government, work to talk to other, other, other agencies who actually have the similar, you know, intentions. See how we can get help from them, because we really need help. We need help. <laughs> Even if it's medication, you know, we need help. But um, we hope we'll get it much more. Okay. No. Um, well, we are still still on this issue, talking about seeking help from your... Uh, where are the venue for this outreach, this 16th um, edition? edition. Oh, we'll really the one is the primary health center, so it's at least of you. Okay. And then we'll have another one in Nanka, uh, the palace of the... Uh, palace of the Igwe of Nanka. Of Nanka. And then we also have one at um, Landmark Hotel in Bubu. This Lama Hotel is so, is so, is so dear to us. But one of our brother priests was from a group and he used to join us in the mission. When he died, he, before he died, he talked to me, he told me, I uh, hope you can you tell this mission to my people. Wow, Father John, John Paul. Father John Paul. Wow. So wow. he died, you know, wow. young boy, young man, um, public health um, professional. He was so sad. So for, in memory, we keep going to Buku. We are uh, fearful for him. We do that for him. Okay, in memories. Yeah. He woke up and we had to open a book in honor of yes, yes. 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 And uh, so now, after then, on we have also Nanambra State. For now, I made that goal last time. You know, we keep expanding, but you know, we, our capacity also. Um, we, we, we don't have the capacity. That is the financial capacity we so, are talking about. Yeah. Any plan for what should be expected in the January edition of it? Oh, yeah. it is always there. It's always boom. 
Yes. Which which which, which areas are we likely to surgery, especially you know you talk about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, the general edition is always fully encompassed, including medical, surgical. Oh, we spend more all, days. Yes. All, all we spend we are the same the same location. Okay. Like I said, it's our dream that would expand it to other local, local governments, yeah. other communities, yeah. but uh, we are currently being faced by some financial restrictions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would have explored the whole of Anambra State because we know that what we are seeing here are also available there yes, in yes, other yes, communities. Yes, uh, and so, um, with God, we be believe in God that uh, we will be expanded financially so that we can be able to reach out to the remaining communities. Uh, 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 there's something we've been able to find out from, uh, from this research one because this, as this is going on also research, you know, we're looking at the data, so we're, looking at, uh, we're looking at the tons of uh, sickness we're having here. Really. And we realize that over 50% of the sickness we have here in our community are actually from water. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's bad. Yes, yes. That's from the research we have because yes. we have data, we have documentation. So we keep looking at it. I felt so bad. So that means there's something the government needs to do in order yes, to bring yes, about sanity yes, to the side of yes. water. Yes. But most houses in this part of the world, every house also rather fetches from the borehole. So uh, could, it, could, it, could it be that the borehole, there's a contamination well, of Well, in this media? other area, the borehole, yeah, is it treated? Water is not treated. And then are some places where the borehole cannot easily be explored water is being taken by the tanker to yeah. another borehole to underground tank and all of the process I of transportation also will get water contaminated underground yes so is there and that's why you need to with the data that you have and the information that you have right now is there any need you're working with the ministry this i mean the government to see mm. if they can do anything so that things like that will be yes. understand. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, we, we, we're looking forward to that yes. and uh, we're not going to be we won't be, we won't be able to do all that but I know. as I was talking about it and then the government is interested we can, from, we can also we have that we're very open mm -hmm. we can share data with them we can share information and then and that also brings a lot of relief to the people because this data we have they may not have it they may yeah, exactly and so we have it so if they come we, 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 well, we're not keeping it for anything. We should keep it from them. And that will help greatly, and honestly. Um, I look forward to seeing that happen, especially with His Excellency, you know, um, our, our Governor, you know. So I hope to see that happen because we've had a conversation before, even before becoming the Governor, and, the governor, and he was very passionate about it. And I hope he's still passionate about it, even though we've not been you know, talking about it every time. But I hope we will talk about it soon. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, quickly, um, having the two of you here talk about the, the, the human's job you're doing in trying to bring uh, smiles to the people when it has to do with their health and other ailments that they are going through. Well, it would be good also to probably get from beneficiaries, you understand, and that's what we'll be playing right now so that people definitely can get to see that it's not just all talk, but then there are actions to actually back the talk that is being said here in the studio. We'll take a short break. Let us hear from the beneficiaries and then we'll come back and wrap it up with our philanthropist in the studio. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. What brought me here today is Caesarean session. I heard that Dr. Fomata, a brother God is using, is hosting a free medical mission. That's why I came. As God will have it, it is usually January that operations are usually done. But due to his mercies, the doctors agreed to conduct a caesarean session. I thank God and the Marcel Ofomata Foundation for doing this for me.
And so it is with the Marcella Formata Foundation. Training heads in power Well, you've seen it there. Uh, that's a testimony from one of the beneficiaries of the Master of Formata Medical Outreach. And then you can see when you not just put smiles on the face of one person, but you're bringing life to it. Uh, that is really, really laudable. Sincerely speaking, uh, I wish for all our philanthropists or those that have the inkling, you understand, that are you know, you know, thinking about how they can do something for their community. You don't need to wait until you gather the billions. You can start with the little that you definitely can do. Sincerely speaking, I was really, really moved. Thank God I didn't get to see the entire process of the, uh, the operation because um, I'm adversely when it has to do with seeing, seeing blood. But then I'm medically inclined because I like medical things. And I, so now, seeing this and then you know, knowing that this woman can't afford to, you understand, cater for this and then. How did this issue get to you? Or how, as in who met who? Was it that they heard about it or they came to you people or that you guys went and said, this is what we are doing here, so please, if you have such challenges, you come. Because sincerely speaking, I remember then in school, they used to tell us that uh, when you prepare, you understand, when you prepare hard enough, you become luckier. Yes. Please tell us about that, doctor. Okay. For instance, you see the woman that was carrying a baby yeah. and was smiling with the other woman. The woman is a, a, a para four with this pregnancy, with this delivery. Para four means she has delivered. This was her full time to deliver. And then she had had three previous cesarean sections, which would be absolute for her to have another repeat cesarean section. Is that uh, actually, is yes. that the way it is in medical? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, she had had three previous cesarean sections. Absolutely, the next one will be cesarean sections. So, but uh, she was almost close to them. She was at 36 weeks already, getting to 37 weeks. But she did not have money. And then she was attending antenatal care at the primary health center where you don't even have a medical doctor. And then cesarean section cannot be carried out there. So where she was referred to a facility where she could get cesarean section done or the gynecologist could give her adequate attention. She couldn't go because of lack of funds. So eventually, coincidentally for her, uh, it was a time we were coming into Anambra in January. And then the, the caregivers at the primary health center uh, told her that, okay, these people are coming in. Let's see if there will be gynecologist substitution among them. And usually we have and the pediatricians as well. So when we came, that the, the, the nurse in charge of the primary health center approached us and told us, we say, yes, why are we here? We are here to provide uh, free medical services to everyone, irrespective of age, gender, sex, community, language. We are here. Status. Yes, yes status. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to do that. So that was how we were able to provide that uh, free cesarean section for her. Um, we took care of the baby, gave her uh, both intraoperative and postoperative medications. And we also, in our team, also doctors who are anesthetists, those that will be controlling pain during surgery. So that the anesthetist was there to perform that function, and the steroid section was carried out. The baby delivered in good condition and with good ab adequate APGAS score. Uh, baby is fine. I've been calling the vet of the hospital to find out. Mother and baby are completely fine. And over time, they've been expressing their joy and satisfaction to God Almighty and to Marcel Ophomata Foundation. Even though uh, the, the woman had been counseled uh, you know, <laughs> for bed control. But you know, women in Africa, they don't have up to 10. Uh, they haven't had enough. I think in, in that aspect, it's the men that you can see. <laughs> but you know, it's the women that bear the pain. So <laughs> most of the time, you may not even find the men in the hospital. Yeah, yes, it's the women that you always find. So when, when we have opportunity to see the men, we also counsel them alongside. Counsel them alongside. You, yeah. you know, yeah. we always start this with health education. 
Yeah, time because I was about coming to that. Yes, because so now, because, because if you're talking about marriage. cutting across every gender, then that yes. means there should be from the beginning teaching these children yes. about health education, yes. hygiene, yes. No, and the girl child too about before the, the commencement the of everything. We yes. take up to about one hour yes. giving yes. health education, health talks in a because language, yes, in a language they understand because it's not only us providing cure. Preventive medicine is what we are actually advocating for. So. Part of the preventive medicine is for you to give health education. And the health education will uh, enable the people to avoid what they are supposed to avoid. They are supposed to, they will take care of themselves at no cost. For instance, uh, hygiene, good personal hygiene, have your bath, know where somebody is coughing, cover your mouth, cover your nose, where somebody is coughing, you that is close to the person, try to put your face away, and all of that. Yeah. So, so many means of prevent, uh, prevention yeah. of uh, mean, contracting ailments, especially those ones that are transmitted from one person to the other, or those that are born. So, people are given adequate talk. Even the pregnant women. Pregnant women, most of them become malnourished during pregnancy, out of um, malnutrition, and all of that, including the children, See children suffer marasmus, kwashioko, kwashioko marasmus. So meanwhile, not necessarily that the, 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 there's the absence of food, food. but probably the, the, the application, the application. At home, people have gardens, farms where they have vegetables, they have fruits that they can provide for the children. Even if you can just provide a little meal, small meal that could be rich enough to contain all classes of food, protein and all of that. But because of lack of knowledge, poverty of knowledge, people do not actually implement all that they have, the full potential that they have. So with this health education we provide to the people, so it goes a long way to ameliorate most of these situations. So after health education, it just go, just yeah. be good. Yes. yes. Some women have miscarriages during pregnancy just because of malaria. Just because of malaria. And Malaria preventive, uh, 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 preventive protocol in the antenatal period is not actually expensive. There's what we call intermittent prophylaxis treatment for malaria in pregnancy. But women, because they do not attend antenatal care, they do not know. And they will now continuously have you know, miscarriages until they become a bit well. Mm -hmm. now have and consistent, they begin to say yes, they now begin to people. think of, uh, you know, village oh, people, people who share boundaries with them, <laughs> their you know, father and mother-in-law must have eaten the, up the pregnancy <laughs> in the spiritual world, some of these things are spiritually inflicted. So with health education, I think yes. many people so would have come off all of this, because we spend time doing this, and we have received so much tes many testimonies from some of our beneficiaries. Thank you so much because um, health education is very, very important, not just in this uh, to the less privileged yes. or the, the uneducated, you yeah. understand? Even the educated because those people that think they know it all are even the people that fall victim yes, the most. Of course. Because yes. um, you will see somebody telling you that once I feel aches on my joints, yes. I know it's malaria and yes. they just go and prescribe themselves malaria drugs, you understand? And without running proper tests, uh, yes, uh, tests yes, to actually no. um, diagnose what it is that you're, you're going through. Now, when you, you see, earlier you said um, there is data that you collate from this, your patients, the people that you meet, and then further, when you come the second time, you continue yes. uh, from yes. there. How much of that, you understand, continuation of, okay, you met this person in January and there was a deliberating um, ailment the person was taking. It's sometimes people don't adhere strictly to the instruction of doctors or medical um, officers and then their ailments deteriorate. How do you manage that? Is there a way somebody can reach out to you people even if it's not the time for you people to come so as to prevent uh, the situation getting worse? Yes. Is there a follow line or yeah. maybe email or whichever yes. means one, people can Actually, contact uh, you? Actually, our contacts are open. Our contacts are always open. Besides, when we treat, there are some conditions we treat and request uh, require follow-up. We tell them, go back to so, so so hospital, the nearest hospital, go here, go here. Most of the time, they do not adhere to that. 
Call we say, okay, <laughs> go to the primary health center. Most of them do go there. And through the lines of the workers in the primary health center, they contact most of us. We have a platform where some of them, the nurses are there, they share. This is a person come. In fact, as a matter of fact, we have come to even know most of our beneficiaries. Oh. We have come to know most of our clients one on one, yeah. especially those who have uh, chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension. So over some time, from time to time, they communicate, doctor, my medication has finished. As you directed me, you instructed me, I've checked my blood sugar. Uh, I checked my blood sugar a day ago, I checked it two days ago. This is what my fasting blood sugar is now. We now can direct, okay, step down the medication or step it up or go and see you know, a diabetic doctor, endocrinologist, go to social place, okay, or go get social medication. My blood pressure now is 130, it has come down from 200, I'm okay now. Uh, can I stop? We say no, this is chronic disease, you don't stop, you can only control it. Either you step up the dose of the medication you are taking, or you step it up, you step it down, or you change the line of the medication to another class if it does not control it. No, so that's what we do. There is a, a constant follow-up. Wow. The follow-up may not necessarily be so Formal, perfect, but Formal, yes, yeah, because but we still actually refer them to seek care, especially those with that condition, because you know these conditions are conditions that could cause multiple organ failure, failure like kidney failure, like uh, liver failure, heart failure. Like if you have a um, you know, of control or poorly controlled diabetes, hypertension, and all of that. Some persons with uh, even peptic ulcer disease that we have come to discover, a lot of them have in this uh, community, people could have a perforated ulcer. You know, some persons who have joint pain, muscle yeah. pain, headache, and they will just stroll to the pharmacy or stroll to the chemist, ah, body, body, well, aid, especially yeah. those that are farmers, farmers and laborers. And then they will be prescribed all manner of things. They could give somebody uh, diclofenac, they will give somebody ibuprofen, that's the person, they will give you, I mean, all, I mean, the, the, the uh, 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 painkillers they are giving you from the same class of what we call non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, insects that are capable of causing or exaggerating ulcer. So many persons will come and develop this, and then this could progress to perforated ulcer that can even lead to death wow. if adequate attention is not, not given. given. And then uh, some persons will say, this is spiritually inflicted. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> Our people call it, oh, you eat a bit. <laughs> and say, no, in the stomach. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. So people could die from it. People could die from it. So, but we have come to actually spot out some of these things. A man, the other, during the, uh, our last edition in January, told us, doctor, came and told me, doctor, do you know that I used to feel that it's my neighbor that I was sharing boundaries with that used to keep something for me. Uh, and then it was affecting my stomach. And I used to feel pain sometimes, I was still blood. I told him, no, no, we had diagnosed you of a bleeding ulcer. So stop taking medications outside doctor's prescription. And then we had treated him with, for ulcer, we had counseled him, we listed the medication he should not take. He has to avoid, he must avoid it. And then he should see a doctor. So by our last mission, he came with testimonies. Thank so, you so much. Uh, quickly, let's de dwell on uh, the mission that we have. Um, when is it coming? To, uh, today, today, today. today. Let's wrap up with that so that people can definitely get to hear one or two things that are wait there. It's okay. So for today, as usual, we have come with full package. We have come with full package. We are fully equipped. Yeah. We are fully equipped with medications Everything. of all class. We, we are fully equipped with the laboratory investigations. We have come with laboratory scientists that will carry out free uh, tests for malaria, free tests for wider urinalysis, as we call it, urine, and test it. We we'll test blood sugar, we we'll test HIV, we we'll counsel and test people for HIV, we we'll test hepatitis B and C. It has been rampant, but many people do not know because uh, it, it is not like a, it is transmitted like HIV, but uh, because people are not actually aware. So uh, 
somebody could just say, okay, it is uh, hepatitis, you ignore. But it, it is hepatitis C, you ignore. <coughs> it kills. It's a killer disease yeah. as well. It's yes. a killer disease. So um, we have come with all of these um, men to test for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, urinalysis, even pregnancy tests because uh, over time we have been equipped, fully equipped with experience. A woman could come, she does not even know that she's pregnant, she less complaints, and then you treat, not knowing that she's pregnant. The medication you are giving could be teratogenic, that is, could yeah. destroy yeah. the fetus, the especially in the organogenesis yeah. period. So we come with the pregnancy strips that we have a suspicious woman, we can test. We can test. So we are fully equipped. And in the pharmacy, we have come with the main professional pharmacists, qualified pharmacists, that are also there to dispense medications as the case may be. Maybe. We have medications ranging from anti-malaria, antibiotics of all classes. We have medications to treat ulcer, like I said. We have medications to treat diabetes. We have medications, anti-hypertensive medications. We have medications for pains like that, anti-inflammatory drugs, a wide range of medications that I cannot exhaust yeah. now. And then we also come with the ophthalmologist, uh, yes, and optometrist, eye doctors. So these ones are also coming to prescribe. They will examine your eyes and prescribe uh, glasses, appropriate glasses. appropriate glasses with the appropriate powers and medication for those that require um, um, drops. We have the drops for the eyes, and they are also there. In the future, nearest future, maybe we are looking at beginning from next year, next edition, we will be carrying out uh, free eye surgeries wow. in the missions as well because uh, we have been having encounters with some of our clients coming with the cataracts presenting with cataracts, pterygium, sty, all kinds of eye conditions that could be carried out in such a setting. So in the next edition, we hope yeah. to include that. Ah, thank, thank you so much. You really, really said extensively about what this mission is all about. I, I want to thank you for the human's job that you're doing. It is actually very humongous, and we continue to pray that uh, God in his infinite mercy will continue to strengthen the Amakon group headed by Dr. Marcel Amechi of Formata, the founder of Marcel of Formata Foundation. We well, thank you so much for what you're doing. And to Dr. Um, Alfonso Ekanem. Uh, okay, Ogo, okay. <laughs> Chief Medical Director Marcel of Formata uh, Foundation. Thank you so much for availing yourself the opportunity to be here. And then God will reward you too for putting smiles on the, uh, the faces of these uh, people that you're actually doing. Philanthropy, they say, uh, even if you have the inkling, it has to be something that you derive actual joy from doing, not necessarily needing the commendations uh, from people or from uh, the people that you're giving it out to, seeking some form of um, recognition, but it's just that you're doing it because that is what gives you peace and joy. And that's how we'll be wrapping up uh, this edition of Good Morning Anambra, the discussion segment. My name is still Ajulichuku Okabwe. Definitely next week, God willing, we'll definitely get to do it again. Bye for now.